me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get... We'll start this lecture by reviewing some things that we learned last lecture about rational canonical form. So the setup is that V is an n-dimensional vector space over F, some field, and T is a linear transformation from V to itself. We know that there exist unique monic polynomials, A1, A2, up to AM of X, of degree at least one, satisfying the divisibility relations, A1 divides A2, A2 divides A3, and so on. And V is isomorphic to a direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules, F bracket X mod the ideal generated by A1, direct sum plus 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 F bracket X mod the ideal generated by AM. These uh, polynomials are called the invariant factors of V. So we want to choose a good basis for V where we can describe the linear transformation T in a nice way with respect to that basis. So we're going to work one cyclic F bracket X module at a time. For each I, we're going to choose the basis one X bar, X squared bar. I'm going to stop saying bar x to the ki minus 1, where the degree of ai is this ki. And this gives a basis for the quotient f bracket x mod the ideal generated by ai. And why this basis? Well, if we pick that basis, then the multiplication by x linear transformation has a simple matrix representation with respect to this basis. I mean, what is the matrix representation of a linear transformation with respect to some basis? Is the columns tell you where each basis element is getting sent as a linear combination of the other basis elements. So you can see why uh, if your transformation is multiplication by x, why this basis, you get something particularly simple. What do you get? You get the companion matrix of this polynomial AI. OK, so now that we have a good choice of basis for this cyclic f bracket x module, that corresponds to some set of elements in V, because V is a direct sum of these cyclic F bracket X modules. So we're going to name those set of elements to be BI. And we're going to let B be the union of B1, B2, up to BM. And B is a basis for V. This leads to the definition, a matrix is in rational canonical form if it is the direct sum of companion matrices for monic polynomials A1 up to AM, each of degree at least one, satisfying the divisibility relations A1 divides A2, A2 divides A3, and so on. And a rational canonical form for a linear transformation is a matrix representing that linear transformation that is in rational canonical form. So just to be really clear with this direct sum of companion matrices, what does that look like? You get this block diagonal matrix. You get uh, square matrices along the diagonal, zeros everywhere else, where what are these square matrix blocks? They are the companion matrix of A1 of X, the companion matrix of A2 of X, and so on, the companion matrix of AM of X. So this whole discussion here, what are we seeing? We're seeing that starting from V, n-dimensional vector space, and T, a linear transformation, applying this direct sum uh, like classification for modules over a PID in terms of these cyclic F bracket X modules and making a good choice of basis for each one, what we get in the end is a basis for V such that the matrix representation of T is in this rational canonical form. So we're seeing that every linear transformation has a rational canonical form. So just to say a little bit more, uh, the size of each of these blocks is the degree of the corresponding polynomial. So you have a K1 by K1 matrix here, K2 by K2 matrix here, KM by KM matrix here. Since they all divide each other, the degrees uh, are going up. Each one is greater than or each block is at least as large as the one that came before. So the biggest block is in the lower right corner. Um, and the total size of this matrix is the dimension of the vector space V. This is an n by n matrix. Okay, so 
Here we say a rational canonical form. We've seen that every linear transformation has a rational canonical form. And now I'm going to pause and erase, and then we'll prove that the rational canonical form is unique. We'll now prove theorem 14 in section 12.2, rational canonical form for linear transformations. This says two things. One, there is a basis for V so that the matrix representing T with respect to this matrix with respect to this basis is in rational canonical form. And two, the rational canonical form for T is unique. So we've already seen the proof of the first part by choosing a good basis for V so that the matrix representing T is in rational canonical form. We decompose V as a su direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules. We make a good choice of basis for each one of those cyclic modules. And that gives us a good basis for V overall. So we just have to prove this uniqueness part. And the idea is that we're going to use the uniqueness that we know we have for the invariant factor decomposition of V as a direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules to prove the uniqueness of this matrix representing T that's in rational canonical form. So here's the idea. We're gonna suppose that B1 up through BT are monic polynomials of degree at least one, satisfying the divisibility relations, B1 divides B2, B2 divides B3, and so on. And that there is a basis E of V for which the matrix of T with respect to this basis is the direct sum of the companion matrices of these polynomials. So what are we saying? That there's some basis of E of V where you get the matrix of T with respect to this basis is this thing in rational canonical form. So we already have the one from before where we have CA1 up through CAM. And now we have another one. And our goal is to show that T equals M and that each AI is equal to each BI. So here I've just expanded out just to remember, to help you recall, like what is a companion matrix look like? Zeros along the main diagonal, ones along the main subdiagonal under that. And then the last column, you have the negative of the coefficients defining bi of x. Here I'm using d for the coefficients because now I'm using b for these polynomials. All right. So the idea is that we're going to use this matrix in rational canonical form to write v as a direct sum of cyclic f bracket x modules. And it's not going to be the same thing. It's not going to look like the same decomposition that we already have of v is isomorphic to F bracket X mod the ideal generated by A1, direct sum, plus, 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 and so on. So we're going to use this matrix to get a, a decomposition of V as a direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules. So here's the idea. Let's suppose that each of these blocks, first one has size S1 by S1, S2 by S2, that the degree of each BI is SI. So this matrix corresponds to a basis for V. So if we look in the first S1 columns, that corresponds to the first S1 basis elements of E. So each block gives SI generators in this basis E. So the SI generators of E corresponding to the columns where we get the CBI of X block, the companion matrix of BI, these form, if you take the span of those basis elements, they form a T-stable subspace DI of V. So why is it T-stable? Well, what happens when you apply uh, the linear transformation T? It's acting, uh, I mean, the action of X on this vector space is given by this linear transformation T. So what does T do to this set of basis elements? This is the matrix of T acting on these basis elements. Like, we're seeing it right here. So it's sending each one of these basis elements to a linear combination of these basis elements. You never leave this block of SI generators. So it's sending this subspace to this subspace. It's stable under T. And uh, V is a direct sum of these T stable subspaces. V is the span of all of these uh, elements of E and 
we can take the first E1, the first like S1, the second S2, the next S3, and so on. And each one of those is kind of staying in its little subspace. OK, so now we're going to do is say, all right, we have these subspaces of V, these DIs. And we're going to take EI to be the corresponding ordered basis of DI. So it's a bunch of elements out of this basis E. We're going to name them EI. This should feel like what we were doing before, but in reverse. So we're taking this basis E and we're breaking it up into an E1 block, E2 block, so that E is going to be the union of all of these things. And now, if you look at the companion matrix of BI, it's clear that this subspace is a cyclic F bracket X module with generator EI, the first element of this like script EI set. What does that mean? Well, if you start with one generator, say one here, and you apply T, that's the same as the multiplication by X linear transformation. That sends one to X. You apply it again, that sends X to X squared. Then you get x cubed, x to the fourth. You get all of the powers corresponding to the basis elements here. You get 1x up to x to the si minus 1. So this is cyclic as an f bracket x module. And the generator is whatever the first, uh, yeah, whatever the first basis element is here. So I shouldn't say, yeah, I shouldn't, I guess for right now, we just have these basis elements aren't necessarily identified with like 1x, x squared up to x to the si minus 1. But that's how I think about it. Like when you use, uh, when you look at this companion matrix, that's what I'm seeing. But really, it would be more accurate to say, OK, you have the first basis element. The linear transformation t acting here sends the first basis element to the second basis element. And the second basis element gets sent to the third basis element, and the third to the fourth, and so on. So. It's convenient for me to think about this in terms of like powers of X in a polynomial. But really, what we're doing is we're seeing that um, this is a cyclic F bracket X module just because E1 gets sent to E2, E2 gets sent to E3. Like you sort of go along to through the basis elements. And then the last basis element gets sent to some interesting linear combination of. Uh, the other ones that looks like the coefficients of this polynomial b i of x. OK, so I'll pause and erase and show you that now at this point, we have started with v. And now we have uh, gotten a bunch of cyclic f bracket x modules, d1, d2, up to dt. We need to say one more thing about these subspaces di, these t-stable subspaces uh, that have the property where v is the direct sum of them. What there are these subspaces of v? These are torsion f bracket x modules, and we can ask what is the annihilator of each one? And looking at the way that the linear transformation t acts on di, we can see from the fact that the matrix of T with respect to the basis that we chose is the companion matrix of BI of X. Just like last time, we can see that this means that the annihilator of DI is BI of X. That BI of X, uh, when you have X act as T on this space, BI of X uh, acts as the zero linear transformation, and uh, it is the annihilator. OK, so where are we? So V is isomorphic to a direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules. First, one given in terms of these A1 up through AM polynomials. And we have seen, starting from this assumption, that there are these other polynomials, B1 up through BT, so that the matrix of T is in rational canonical form given in terms of these polynomials. We first see that V is a direct sum of d1 direct sum d2 direct sum plus 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 dt, but that each one of these di's is a torsion f bracket x module annihilated by this monic polynomial bi of x. We see that v is also isomorphic to f bracket x mod the ideal generated by b1 plus 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 direct sum f bracket x mod the ideal generated by bt. 
So what was the big idea here? We started with uh, our matrix. We started with V. We assumed that there was a basis of V for which the matrix of T was in rational canonical form with respect to these polynomials B1 up through BT. And then we saw how that led to V being isomorphic to a direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules that come from these B1 up through BT. But now we know by theorem nine from section 12.1, the uniqueness of the invariant factors that if you have two different invariant factor form decompositions for V, then these invariant factors have to match up. So M equals T, the number of invariant factors is the same. And each ideal generated by AI is the same as the ideal generated by BI. So what does that mean? That doesn't immediately mean that they're the same polynomial, but they have to differ by at most a unit because they generate the same principal ideal. But since we assume that AI of X and BI of X are monic, that means that they actually are equal. So what we're seeing is we start with uh, a vector space V and a linear transformation T. We described at the beginning how to make a choice of a basis for V for which the matrix of T with respect to this basis was in rational canonical form. Then we said, okay, if there's another different choice of basis where the matrix of T with respect to that basis is in rational canonical form with respect to some other polynomials, we saw how that led to a decomposition and then using the uniqueness of the invariant factor decomposition for a finitely generated module over a PID, that means that in fact, these polynomials match up. So those matrices were the same. So the rational canonical form for a linear transformation is unique. 